Please be seated. Look at all these beautiful faces. Don't you love gathering here to worship in this holy place? We continue our series based on the different ways that we know Jesus. Today we turn to Jesus as Savior, our Savior. And right off the bat, I want to tell you something I think is interesting. In the entire New Testament, Jesus is called Savior twice, two times. In the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, and then again in today's passage from John, Jesus has just met and talked with the Samaritan woman at the well. Her life was completely changed after that. And so when she got back to her town, she told everybody about Jesus. Here's the response from the townspeople. John 4, 39 to 42. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony he told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves. And now we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts that we may be acceptable in thy sight, our Savior. Amen. Just as Susan just told us, Savior may well be the most common term that Christians use to describe Jesus. Remember when Jesus saves was written all over the place years ago? Maybe it was red neon lights on a storefront church or painted in huge letters on the roofs of barns or placed on bumper stickers. Jesus saves is understood as the central work for both individual Christians and for the life of the world. If you were to ask random Christians who Jesus is, I think Jesus is my savior might well top the list. When we joined the United Methodist Church, we were asked, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? I was taught that that means trusting in his grace and serving others in his name. Many times Christians will ask, have you been saved? Or is Jesus your Savior? Or tell me about your conversion experience. Scott and I, met and married in seminary. And we soon began to look to ordination and to which annual conference we would ask to be appointed. The bishop of my home conference refused to appoint women to serve as pastors of churches, so it was a no-brainer. We decided to seek ordination in South Carolina, which was Scott's home conference. Nobody knew me here, and I was a woman. And after all the papers on history, doctrine, and polity, all, after all that was written, the time came for interviews. The questions that a room full of men asked me 40-something years ago 
would not be allowed today. Tony White's nodding. <laughs> the easiest question I was asked, and it was still difficult because, to be honest, I was wondering if they were still trying to trip me up, was tell us when you were saved. I responded with something like, I was raised by Christian parents and grandparents. I loved Jesus when I was a toddler. I loved going to Sunday school and singing Jesus Loves Me. And as I learned more about him through reading the scriptures and experiencing his presence in my life, I loved him more. As I grew up, I was at church any time the doors were open because I had a deep hunger to know Jesus even more deeply. I can't point to one conversion experience, but I can point to many times when I've been overwhelmed by the power of his presence. I believe we all come to Jesus in different ways, and I'm grateful that people come in whatever way he chooses. If I were asked that same question today, I'd probably answer it the same way. And yes, I was approved for ordination. <laughs> I dare say that most people think of salvation as being related exclusively to the afterlife. Salvation is the work of a savior that enables us to get to go to heaven when we die. Certainly, scripture is concerned with eternity. What we tend to overlook is scripture's stress on salvation as God's invitation to share God's life here, now, so that we might do so forever. Salvation isn't just a destination, it's our vocation. Salvation isn't just a question over who is saved and who isn't, who will get to go to heaven and how, <clears throat> but it's also how we're swept up in the participation in the life-giving grace of Jesus here and now. Of course being saved by the Savior means eternal life. That's what Jesus' death and resurrection mean, but that's not when he became the Savior. He was a Savior when he walked this earth. Like countless others, the life of the Samaritan woman at the well was transformed, and the Bible is explicit that Jesus was Savior then. When Jesus healed people, they experienced God's salvation through being set free from their illness. Disciples left their homes and families. Tax collectors left their jobs. Children, servants, soldiers, peasants, farmers, prisoners, the blind and the lame. When they encountered Jesus, they were saved from whatever weighed them down. Jesus saves in all these ways and more. Jesus saves. For some, the need is for liberation. For others, the need is homecoming. For others, the need is acceptance. No matter our experience or our deepest needs, Jesus saves. Jesus' earthly ministry was characterized by a constant, relentless reach. Jesus saves people that nobody thought could be saved. Jesus loves people that everybody thought were beyond saving. And he didn't just welcome them. He went out looking for them. Every Miracle, 
every act of hospitality, all of the bread broken and served, everything that Jesus did saved people long before Rome arrested and murdered him. It was all this loving and healing and saving that got him into trouble with the authorities. He was not killed so that his death would save people. He was killed because he was already saving them. He threatened a world based in fear, one held in the grip of Roman imperialism, and he did it by proving that community could gather in love, set a table of plenty, and live in peace with a compassionate God. Jesus did atonement at one mint long before he was nailed to a cross. Atonement at one meant was the reason the authorities did away with him. As Diana Butler Bass says, no empire can stand if the people it oppresses figure out that reconciliation, love, liberation, and oneness hold more power than the sword. Jesus was born a savior. He saved people during his time on earth. He saved people through his death. This is our hope. That in life, in death, in life beyond death, Jesus saves. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, we give thanks to you that the Gospels reveal you to be a God who saves. You got into lots of trouble because of the sort of company you kept at the table, because of the way you loved and welcomed all sorts of people. We have heard your welcome. We have sensed your call. We give thanks that you even yet love sinners like us enough to die for us so that in your love we might live for you. Amen. <clears throat>